our today's topic is equipotential surface now once we know about uh, potential and electric field we can imagine of all the points in electric field which are at the same potential i give you an example there is a point charge very simple example there is a charged particle which has got certain charge q at distance r it has a potential and that potential is q upon r now of course constant will be there 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q upon that is potential here okay if i go to this distance r here then what is its potential same if i go to distance r here if i go to distance r here if i go to distance r here if i go to distance r inside this side this side this side everywhere potential is same now what is the locus of all those points join up all those points it will become a sphere simple so a sphere the surface of sphere every point of the surface is at equal distance r so if at center i put a charge q then at every point of the surface the potential is same so i will call this surface as equipotential surface so now we are in a condition to write the definition of equipotential surface okay equipotential surface is that imaginary surface on which at every point the potential is same example i have shown you just now a charge is placed this is equipotential surface now this equipotential surface is there only one for a charge or there are many so answer is if this is a point charge at this distance all points are at the same distance so everywhere the potential is same but if i make a if i make a sphere here for this also at every point the distance is same so this is also an equipotential surface this is also an equipotential surface and in this way this is also an equipotential surface all these are equipotential surface so at any time a large number of equipotential surfaces can exist so to make it simple to make it short from the word equipotential surface we uh, cut out surface make it silent and all these will be known as equipotentials this we have made a noun this is now equipotentials these are equipotentials and if we make it larger and larger and larger this will go like this 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 the curvature will keep becoming less and if you go far away then what is the shape you are going to get this 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 finally you will find for a very small this these two appear to be parallel lines this so maybe at much a distance we will find two equipotentials which are parallel to each other here also they are parallel to each other but they are curved here if we come far away they may become parallel so these equipotentials correct these are equipotentials correct so equipotential is a surface at every point potential is same now some characteristic related to equipotentials here what is the direction of electric field answer this is the direction of electric field radially outward and this is spherical what is the angle between them this is a right angle so electric field and equipotential they are always at right angle to each other this is one thing we remember most important that is equipotential and electric field 
are at right angle to each other. Equipotential. Okay. So, this shows that if at any place we know the direction of electric field, this is the direction of electric field. So, what should be the direction of equipotential? Normal to this. This is the equipotential direction. And if I talk about surface, then this surface is equipotential surface because this is electric field and this is at right angle to it. So, equipotential are always at right angle to electric field and this help us to find the direction of equipotential. Vice versa, electric field is always at right angle to equipotentials. If equipotential lines are given to us, if I say this is this is uh, equipotential, what is the direction of electric field? So, direction of electric field, normal, 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 this normal, 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 this. This is the electric field, radially outward or that way. Okay. Now, another very important thing. If this is center, what is the potential at this point V1 and potential at this point V2? Which is a larger potential? The answer V1 is close, R is small, V1 is larger potential, V2 is smaller potential, V3 is smallest potential. What is the direction of electric field? The electric field is always directed from higher potential to lower potential. Remember, electric field always directed from higher potential to lower potential. This we have done earlier. This I am repeating again. Okay. So, equipotentials and electric field are at right angle to each other. This is one very important principle. Other, the direction of electric field is from higher potential to lower potential and it will be normal to the two. This is how we get the electric field. Then third and the most important thing which is asked about equipotential surfaces. If we carry a charge, okay, third and the most important thing about equipotential surfaces. If a charge is carried, this is an equipotential surface. If I carry a charge from this point and I take it by this path to this point, then how much work I have to do? Because this is a charge and here whole there is electric field. These are what? Not electric field. These are equipotentials. Then where is the electric field? Normal to this. This. This is electric field. This is electric field. And these are potentials. Equipotentials and everywhere it is normal. If I take a charge from this point to this point, how much work I have to do? By work energy theorem we know that work is done by the difference of energy. If I lift this, I have energy in my hand, 100 joule. I did the work. Now energy remaining with my hand is 98 joule. How much work I have done? 2 joule, difference of energy. If I take this charge here, Q, what was the energy with this charge at this point? Answer, energy was Q into V. What is the energy here? Energy here is again Q into V2 and this was V1. But these two points are located at the same equipotential. So V1 and V2 are having same value. So this we can write V and this we can write V. Now work done is equal to change in energy U2 minus U1. But here both are same. So what will be the work done? Zero. So we remember this and make a principle that if a charge is carried on 
through any two points on an equipotential surface, we have to do zero work. No work is required to be done. Maybe there that sometimes we are doing a positive work, but at other time we have to do negative work and the total work will always be zero. Maybe we are working, but if I take one point from here, move it uh, up to this point. This is same equipotential surface. This is how I carry the charge Q. Then what is the net work done? Work done is zero. Why? The work is given by QV and for both it is same V. So energy level is same. Sometimes I do the positive work, sometimes negative work is done on it and the net work is zero. So remember this principle number three that net work done is zero and I will write it for you. Okay, now I will read it for you. The net work done on a charge for carrying it between any two points of an equipotential surface is zero. Okay, so this I take a point from here, take it out, then take it here, then I go back to this point. So I started from here, came back to the same equipotential, so the net work done in total is zero, in total from this point to this point because they lie on the same equipotential. So these are the three principles we have to remember and with this sometimes we are asked the shapes of equipotential and that is a very very tricky thing to know and we will make certain shapes of equipotential in the next lecture.